It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here to confirm the rumor about the $99 Xbox. They'll also talk about Windows Phone, and Paul has a cunning plan. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 260, recorded May 10th, 2012. Armed and Dangerous. Windows Weekly is brought to you by GoToAssist from Citrix. With GoToAssist, you can take control of your IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. Provide live or unattended support to all your users anywhere. Sign up for a 30-day free trial today at GoToAssist.com. Click the Try It Free button and use the offer code WINDOWS. And by Ford. Giving customers the power of choice with a full line of electric and hybrid vehicles. Learn more about Ford Electric Vehicle Technologies at Ford.com slash technology. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers all the latest from Redmond and Points North. Here he is, all the way from Baston, from Dedham, Massachusetts, Baston Environs. Mr. Paul Therotti is the editor-in-chief of the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. He's also a news analyst for Penton Media and news editor for Windows IT Pro, the author of the Windows Phone Bible. No. The Windows Phone Secrets, the Delphi 3 Bible. Super Bible. Soup. Oh, geez. Sorry. Super Bible, Mr. Paul Therott. <laughs> and hello. Hello, Paul. Also here with us, Mary Jo Foley from all about Microsoft.com, the ZDNet blog that's Interestingly enough, all about Microsoft, and today we're going to talk about Microsoft. Actually, we're not. We're going to talk about. Well, this is. I thought this was a very interesting uh, story, and I figured that you would have. You guys would have something to say about it because the Mozilla folks are bitching and moaning about uh, Windows RT, which formerly known as <laughs> Windows on ARM. Doing? Are we going to talk about that? <laughs> Can we talk about yes. that? The Mozilla folks say. The way it's the way it's set up, uh, basically, you'll be using IE and nothing else on uh, the Windows tablets, Windows eight tablets. Is that true? <sighs> yeah, it appears to be. Can Mozilla make a Metro app? Yes, they can. Right, right. They can app. Well, they, they can. can make but you know, they ma Metro. they made a very specific charge today that I had never heard. Uh, I I'm not surprised to discover they are complaining that they can't make. Is that the, the issue that Microsoft will only allow Metro apps? Well, actually, it's a little more nuanced than that. It's kind of interesting. So, obviously, what they're saying, what they were saying first was, look, we want to be able to make a desktop app that runs on Windows RT as well, which is a fair enough uh, one app that rules thing to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but actually, Asa Dot uh, oh, Dotsler, it's Asa, Asa Dotsler's yeah. at it again. You're yeah, old, he. If you look at his friend. blog, he has raised another issue, uh, which is that even on, even in the Metro environment, that is. Uh, Windows, I'm sorry, other browsers will not have as many capabilities as will IE. Ooh, that would be so, a big story, especially given that that's what got Microsoft in trouble in the first place with the DOJ was IE yeah. bundling, right? I can't imagine Microsoft would want to court that problem again. The only thing well, is, and I, you know, I made this case <laughs> in, a, in an article today, um, you know, you got to remember Windows, and I think this, maybe Mary Jo put this in the notes as a question, you know, when is a PC not a PC or right. something along those lines. Yeah. Um, you know, or when is Windows RT, or is Windows RT not Windows, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, w Microsoft obviously is very dominant in the personal computer space, the PC space. But in this new market for devices, which Windows RT is targeting, even though this thing looks and works like uh, the Windows OS that we know and love, so to speak, uh, it runs on a different kind of device, an iPad type device. And is that thing a different market, a different device type? And can you make the argument that Microsoft doesn't have a dominant position in that market and therefore is not beholden by uh, these old-fashioned oh, kind of antitrust issues. And I think there's a case to be made there, That's, certainly. Yeah, except the problem, I think the problem here is that Microsoft already has made the case that Windows RT is Windows. 
You know, when they when they started talking about it as WOA, Windows on Arm, they made a big deal out of saying this is part of the Windows family. Right. You know, and that there's a lot of code (laughs) that's in common between Windows 8 and Windows RT. (laughs) If they hadn't said that, I think they could have made the argument this isn't really Windows. I love that you brought that up. I I just um, I (laughs) I had a little parenting moment with my son last night and I. I uh, introduced him to the, tor- the term hoisted by your own petard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I believe, if very, I'm not mistaken. Very Shakespearean <laughs> of you. Uh, that, is, that is what you are using uh, here right now. <laughs> they have been hoisted. Are you using their own words against them? Yeah. I, I believe they are, their own words are being used against them. I'm not trying to use them against them. See what happens I think when you this- use too many words? <laughs> it, yes. that's, Sinofsky, that's what Sinofsky is saying right now. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, um, they, so by that's, claiming that's it's the Windows, it. they're saying, uh, and we should, you know, they're saying you, we can't get off the hook here. But it, right. but I think that you could reasonably go to a court and say, Your Honor, you know, we yeah. have one point, you know, point one percent of the tablet market, whatever they're going to have. Right. Um, well, okay, but you could, but you know, I, I just on the flip side of that, I would say, you know, it's been a while, but as as, as infused as this stuff is in my brain because of the length. Oh, and depth went on of for this years. awful yeah. trial that they had. Remember, one of the core complaints was using your market power in one market uh-huh. to enter another market right. illegally. Uh-huh. So you could be making the argument here that, uh, well, yeah, sure, you've thwarted us with browsers on the PC, but that's a good point. Now we're moving. It's not really Windows, you know, over here. Now this is a different thing. Mm. We call it Windows RT. Yeah, you know, it's it's. Uh, you it know looks what? like. It, the place they're weak, though, too, where this argument again kind of falls apart is in IE, right? Like IE used to be the by far dominant browser on Windows and it's still the biggest share, but it's losing share. Every month they're losing share pretty much um, when you add all the different versions of IE together. So, you know, c- could Google and Mozilla make the argument that they're using a monopoly power in browsers? I don't know if they could make that argument. No, uh, it's too, it's. 50 percent ish now you know it's not 80 yeah. percent right. or whatever so right probably not i mean if anything the past several years since that trial have shown us that you know a firefox could come up and steal a bunch of share and then more recently chrome can do it too so it is interesting to note that the ipad uh apple tradition on the ipad has said you may not make a application that duplicates our functionality but yeah. the, but the one exception there has been browsers there are in several uh, for quite quite a few uh, alternative mm-hmm. browsers on the iPad. There's no Mozilla. Well, but let me ask you. So think I don't the know Mozilla Corp. This. If they're all worried about this, why aren't they saying? Well, why aren't they making one for the iPad? Uh, yeah, but it's a good question. It's a fair question, actually. I mean, it, on, on Mozilla, I'm sorry, on the iPad. If you were to uh, be using an application that for some reason pushed you onto a web browser, is there a way to register yourself as the default browser on the iPad, like oh. you can do on Windows? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Oh. I, I'm, not, I'm not positive. But in other words, if you're uh, right, no, you're what, right. It will push you out to Safari. You're right. Well, it wouldn't. It, would, it will always push you to Safari. It will always right? in push, other words, push we, you to Safari. Yes. Yeah. So it seems like that environment is, even though it's not a one-to-one relationship um, as far as where it's locked down. You know, obviously the iPad iOS environment is very locked down. Um, like Windows RT, you can only buy apps for that platform from right. its store, from Apple Store, and, right. and that's an interesting thing because. There are application makers that create apps that compete with Apple products like uh, Office Productivity Solutions that would compete with iWork or browser solutions that compete with Safari. And in order to get those things onto that platform, you actually have to be approved by the company that makes the, comp- the competing product. You know, it's, it's, this, it's interesting. I mean, it's not a problem yet because, you know, the iPod, uh, iPad rather doesn't have a monopoly, although um, I, I think if there's anything close to having a monopoly in the tablet space, it would have to be the iPad. Um, so maybe it's okay f- for now, but I mean, it, it seems like Microsoft is using that same playbook. Um, not that I believe Microsoft would prevent o- other, um, you know, app makers from shipping products because they competed with something Microsoft did. I think their approach to this is a little more holistic in the sense that everything that's good for Windows is good for Windows, you know, so, uh, the more apps, the better and so forth, but still, you know, you can see where that would yeah. be a concern. I think where this is going to trip them up again is on on the ARM-based tablets is IE can be in the desktop and also is a Metro style app. It's both, right? Yes. And the other browsers can only be Metro style. So they could make the argument, hey, you have an unfair competitive advantage. You can do both. 
and we yep. can only do one. Actually, and you know, it's even you, worse than that. I was going right? to say, well, and you I mean, can be the default and, and we can't, right? I guess this, uh, this impacts IE too. You know, one of the weird things about any desktop browser in Windows RT, uh, well, I guess IE is the only one, is that even though that browser's there, you're probably not going to be able to install any add-ins in that thing, right? Don't those have to, don't those rely on the x86, x64 platform underneath? I don't actually know, but it would seem that would be the case. Um, if that is not the case, then it's even worse for these other browser makers because it's it's one thing to get your browser on that platform, but where does it end? You know, do you allow Firefox and Chrome add-on makers to add on to that version of the browser as well? Because it's a completely different product. It would have to be, I would imagine. This is an interesting conundrum. <laughs> well, <laughs> any response from Microsoft on this? I mean, well, I was gonna say, right? unfortunately, it's Microsoft, so I'm sure any right. minute yeah. now uh, they will yeah. be explaining in, in, in infinite detail about exactly why what they're doing is the correct thing. So I don't think we need to worry about it. And this. they could change policy. <laughs> they could say, oh, yeah, you're right. So uh, we yeah. will allow uh, some non metro apps. No, I don't think that no, would No, but happen. see, that's the thing. So. You know, obviously, it's a security issue, right? They, by controlling the very few desktop type apps that are allowed on this platform they can ensure a certain level of security um you know and i think they see windows RT, absolutely right exactly um power blah 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 yeah all that yeah, exactly right and and this provides you with a much more consistent inter, uh, experience than you would get otherwise they don't want all of the vagaries that occur in the x86 pc world to occur on arm they want it to be safe secure fast and you know all that stuff so you can't, you know, once you make an exception, it's like, where does it stop? You know, I think that's the the central issue, and and um, I don't expect them to make this exception. They would almost be better off not putting the desktop version of IE in the Metro, you know, in the Windows RT product, right. and then that could avoid this kind of complaining, right? You know? Desktop would solve it. That would solve it. But didn't they? Would, isn't the so, reason IE is in the desktop? for uh it's something like it's it's supposed to be there so if you ex actually do click on something with plugins it'll be a graceful transition it'll be a way for it to like occur it, right? yeah okay sure so yeah i don't know i mean they and then you know the other issue is we're almost at the release candidate are they going to start pulling code out now and is that going to affect the schedule god i hope so <laughs> you do <laughs> gives you more time for the book. i need more time Mary. Sure. no um <laughs> That's a good question. I, I, you know, who can say? So I'm, I'm curious to see how or whether they address this. I mean, uh, this is a big issue. It's an important issue. You know, they went to n they went nuts on this stupid media center thing. It impacts almost nobody, and uh, they have not addressed this yet. So I'm curious to see how or if they do address this. I would, I, it would be very disturbing for days to go by and for them not to address this in some official capacity. Get ready for a 10,000-word blog post on <laughs> From <Windows>. Sanofsky. <laughs> well, I don't look forward to that, but I, that is absolutely preferable to nothing. Right. You know? So, yeah, hopefully it will happen tonight when I'm in the middle of something and I don't have the time to, you know, because, you, you, God, you really have to read these things, you know? <laughs> right, and right. The longer, the, the longer it is, the more, uh, just more awful it is to try to pick through it, you know? I had to go back to that. I don't remember how many words it was, but the the big announcement they made on the last day of February about what Windows on ARM was, you know. And and there was one sentence in there I was able to find. In fact, I can probably find it very quickly in this article uh, where it says, let's see, da, 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 da. Windows on ARM does not support running, emulating, or porting existing x86-64 desktop applications. There it is. <laughs> one sentence. That's all they've said about it. Well, they've been clear. Yeah. I mean, they've been clear all along. Well, they've been clear, but like, that's like finding a needle in a haystack. I just made it clear by saying this oh. is the bit that's important. Okay. I mean, this thing was in the middle of like but a 5,500. But we have reported that. I mean, I, I remember this from previous shows. If you listen to the oh, show, no, I'm, you not saying it. It, I'm not saying it's a secret. Not that I'm just saying, Right. But in other words, this is what happened. So, you know, Mozilla complains this morning. I get up in the morning. Of course, I look at all my news feeds right. and everything. It's all about Mozilla. Mozilla has complained. Mozilla actually has complained three times. Google has complained. I'm right. like, okay, this is a big story. Right. I know in my head that Microsoft said this was the way it was going to be. But now, now I'm tasked with finding it. In other words, it's not enough that I remember it. I have, to be, you know, I have to be able to demonstrate that they actually said this publicly. And that's the sentence. It's the one sentence in that whole thing. It's, you know, 
Right. I don't right. get paid at Leo, I think is what I'm shooting for here. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> it is. It's above your pay grade is what it is. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Could I get, could this, is there a researcher in here that could find this? From? I don't have to read these contracts. Nobody reads these things. Or whatever they are, not contracts. <laughs> Specs, I guess these would be. Um. Okay. Enough said. I think we'll see. I, I don't think we've heard the last of this, I would guess. I, I would I would hope so. Yeah. I and, think this needs yeah. to and, be discussed. But where do you guys stand on this? Should Microsoft make desktop available on uh, Windows RT? To, well, they are to making third party available. apps. I would say yes. I think you should give them that opportunity. Then yep. Mozilla goes away and they say, "Yeah, okay, we'll give you the desktop version." I guess the and question is people who want and, security. And, where do you start? Right. But where do you stop? Right. In other words, um I think if you say yes to that, everybody does, gets it or nobody gets it. Either Microsoft yeah. lets Right, Either right. Microsoft takes itself out of the desktop and right. everybody is on the level playing field or they yeah. let everybody in. Well, I mean, what was Apple's reaction to? In other words, Apple decided on its own, we're not going to support Adobe uh, Photoshop. Um, flash. flash. So did they have some graceful fallback when you hit a flash thing on uh, in Safari? No, it no, just said just doesn't work. Plug in, not there, whatever, right? And you I know, think Microsoft, we can thank them for uh, the, <laughs> the diminution oh. of flash on the web, by the way. Absolutely. So <laughs> it was a pain. You know, for a what's while. Microsoft's reaction to this, right? Right. No, they're going to provide people with a graceful way to fall back to a desktop browser where, you know, you can add plugins, I guess, or at least Flash should be supported or whatever they're doing. But, you know, they're also kind of implicitly screwing other companies that want to provide those capabilities that compete with that browser. You know, and there's no doubt about that. They are keeping those guys off of the platform. Right. I mean, so right. Right. I, it, it's a tough thing, but. I think Microsoft's approach should be what Apple's was, and it should be literally to not have that desktop browser be there. And just not, if you're really concerned about the platform, the security, the reliability, and the performance of the platform, then get rid of desktop IE on Windows RT. But they're not going to do that. I don't think. Well, if, oh, oh, I see. So the issue is there is there a, there's a Metro IE and a desktop IE. Right. Yeah. I, I call get it two it. browsers, one brain. I get it. And what happens if you click a link that calls up a browser? Does it, it will if you're in desktop, will it stay in desktop? And then if you're in Metro, it stays in Metro. You can choose which one well, you, you want can to choose. Do. Yeah. So, but actually, we, we don't totally really know because none of us have ever been allowed to try an ARM tablet. We only okay, know what right. they've I, said. I, I'm describing right? how it works in Windows 8. In yep. other words, in, in Windows 8, in Windows 8 also, does do that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we can sort of see how the behavior is, assuming it's identical, which I sort of assume it is. That, but I, I didn't. I, I forgot that does complicate it because Microsoft is offering IE on the desktop on on Windows. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. So it's not a very clear issue. cut. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If they if they only offered Metro, they couldn't. If they only offered Metro, then if you're in desktop using Office and you and you click a link, well, but they could, of course, it would they could. launch you into Metro. I think it's fair to say that most people using Windows RT are going to be using a device. They should, you, know? you know what? They it, should it, dump all desktop apps, period, from a Windows RT. Well, they can't do it yet. That's the problem. I, I think this is why this is happening. You know, we, we got to remember that this Metro environment is a 1.0 thing. It is woefully incomplete. Ah. And, and beyond the innate capabilities of the platform itself is just the state of the apps that run on top of it. These things are all brand new. So just to use a simple example, they have a Photos app that lets you uh, look at photos that are on your PC, other PCs in your home group. It lets you look at uh, photos that are online online services like Facebook, Flickr, and so on. Okay, neat. What it doesn't have is any way to edit photos, to acquire photos from a camera. You know, all those basic but important and kind of, you know, in some cases advanced tasks. Well, when Microsoft has a Windows application that does all that stuff. And for this transition period, we're going to need both of those things. It's just the way it is. Hopefully, someday in the future, we won't need both if you... You know, if you want the Metro stuff to succeed, I guess. Uh, but we're not there. And that's going to be a, that's a problem with Windows RT as well. You can't just stick a half-baked. Well, actually, Apple does that all the time, don't they? <laughs> Microsoft, Microsoft, but Microsoft will sure not. you do, can. They won't do, oh, they, well, of course you can. They won't. Microsoft doesn't have that kind of constitution. They're just not going to do it. Right. They won't do it. Yeah. And the other reason there's a desktop. desktop. The, the other reason there's a desktop on Windows on ARM is because of Office, right? Like the Office apps, there's four of them that they've already said are going to be on right. on these tablets. Right. They are not Metro style apps. They didn't apps. do Metro. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thing is, so, like, which is I mean, weird. They I, don't mean, have why, it. I guess they don't have it, and that's why. No, but I mean, it would be easy to metrize, right? In other words, you could not have the desktop. You could have those Office applications. Right. They would just run just full screen. You'd never know the difference. Right. You would never know the difference. 
It doesn't, you know, they could just be running on an empty desktop that has no taskbar. You'd never know. By the way, uh, I note that, Mary Jo, you're having a little difficulty calling Windows RT, Windows RT. <laughs> yeah. It's confusing. It's confusing. Yeah. If you say WinRT, it's I different. Know. And I, so, Wasn't Woa an awesome name? Yeah. Why couldn't it have been? So, she's, like <laughs> she, so everybody, we're just going to decide right now, unilaterally, we're going to call everything Windows on ARM, period. Wow. <laughs> the heck Whoa. with Windows RT. Uh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Well, Windows RT stinks because that's also the name of the runtime. Yeah. We right. kind of want to use it as it's a terrible. descriptive term. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but we're, but, well, okay. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. You could metroize Office very simply by just saying there's no desktop. Well, you would just fake it. In other words, yeah, they, just have a already, full screen. The, the way they're going to ship is they will, in fact, ship in a full screen mode with right. this full screen mode. Right. The ribbon is um, minimized by default. They have these all caps uh, menu titles that look like Metro interfaces, even though they're not. And, you know, as far as you're concerned, you're moving between yeah. Metro app, Metro app, right. Office full screen app. You would have no idea. You'd, why would you care? It, all you know is it's just another app. You know they could they could really fudge it pretty easily and um, but, but it's like I said it's more than that the reason is there's all this other stuff you can't you can't browse the file system in Metro for example without using a file picker which is a very specific interface much like a, an open save file you know dialog um, there's there's just a lot of stuff you need the desktop for still because you know again it's a 1.0 thing so right i, I think we're going to get it there and it, and i think the way you're going to get that pure metro environment first will be on windows rt on some future version of windows rt you know maybe for windows 9 the desktop does go away and then they'll see see this is why we did that we just so the goal the goal is to get rid of the desktop we're just not ready so yet not according to Microsoft. <laughs> but, but it is, I believe, for sure. I believe that goal. that is. Yes, I, <laughs> they just don't want to scare people by saying it. I, they've, yeah. Well, they've, they've, I've even been told this in privately, that they expect to see the desktop and Metro coexist for s quite some time to come yeah. uh, side by side. And I, I, that seems contrary to the point of making a new platform. It seems to me right. that your goal should be to make that the platform. You know, they didn't invent NT so they could keep DOS kicking around. You right. know, we're going to have NT, but we're still going to like, because people but like to play DOS. They games, did you know? have, but they did have two tracks for a long time. They had consumer windows based yes. kind of on DOS and NT. They did eventually merge them. So this might be analogous to that. Yeah. Although it's interesting though, because the consumer version in this uh, product line is the one that will go it's to the, the one new going to win. First. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, well, it will drop the legacy stuff first. That's right. interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's a really interesting question, and uh, and I, I just uh, I, you know who who gets to pick what browser you use? Is this? Oh, this Stephen Sanofsky gets. Stephen to pick. does. <laughs> but this, this this is Microsoft I, I, kind of is, reasserting this... its position back in these DOJ yeah, yeah. trials. Guess, guess which that the browser is for? integral to the operating system. It is not a, yeah. a separate app. Yep. All right. And it looks more so in, in a tablet than it does. Uh, By the way, a bunch of side thing. questions to this. Yeah, we talked about the death of Windows Live last week. Um, some of the apps uh, applications are sticking around. So we know that Photo Gallery is going to be around. We know that w uh, Movie Maker is going to be around. Um, I think Mary Jo said that uh, Live Writer will be around. Will those applications be ported to Windows RT? And by the way, if they're not, uh, that, that platform becomes somewhat hobbled, you know, out of the box. Actually, there are uh, innate uh, photo acquisition tools in uh, Windows and a very simple photo viewer that works on the desktop. But um, no real editing tool. So, I mean, what happens at that point? If you want to just do something simple like auto fix uh, across a range of photos, how where does that where is that going to happen on Windows RT if photo gallery doesn't happen, right? And if photo gallery does happen along with those other apps, I mean, what's the message you're sending to third parties? Well, yeah, we're doing our apps. You know, our apps are more important than your apps. What about Photoshop? Yeah. Yeah, it's very a lot interesting. Of a lot of questions. It, there are questions. a lot of questions. And, if only uh, there were some way to clear this all up. <laughs> you know, if only someone... Well, could you could just buy an iPad. Maybe <laughs> that's not the answer that Microsoft's looking for. <clears throat> uh, no. Uh, no. Not the answer. Yeah. I can't speak for Microsoft, Probably but I feel not. comfortable saying... <laughs> this is not the answer you're looking for. This is not the answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's move on. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> Story number two. Right. No. Winders Azure. Now, I have to say, okay, I just want to say something. Yep. We were at the National Association of Broadcasters show, and Microsoft has a booth there, and they're promoting Azure as a great yes. solution for streaming people. You use it. Do you, you, uh, you know, it, it does all the transcoding. It's their, com it's their competing platform for Amazon's EC2 and, um, yep. and you know, Elastic Web and all of that stuff. And now you're saying they're going to kill it? No, 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 no. Oh, just the brand name. Not even that, believe it or not. Although signs were pointing to the contrary earlier this that's week. That's because no one knows how to pronounce it. That's the, re that's I, that's the issue. Totally an issue. I, that's why, actually, when the, when Paul and I were first talking about this earlier in the week, I'm like, I bet they are getting rid of the brand. No one can pronounce it. Yeah. No two Azure. people pronounce <laughs> yeah. Azure the Azure. same way. Azure. Azure. Right. So all, all that really happened was Microsoft sent out an email to customers of Windows Azure and said, hey, guess what? We're going to change the names that you see in your billing portal. So you oh. used to see Windows Azure Compute, and now we're going to call that cloud services. Oh, okay. Just, the, just on and the so bill. They, right, just oh, on the bill. But they okay. took Azure out of the names of everything on the bill. So people immediately made the assumption, that oh, Azure's they're getting rid gone. of Azure. Right, yeah. So they aren't, um, and they won't say why they did that, um, <laughs> which is kind of curious. Um, We're going to do this, I keep but hearing, just, we won't tell you why. Like, I keep hearing the reason they did is the opposite of what everybody thought, that they're actually using this to augment the Azure brand, and they're just saying, you know what, you don't need to know what all these little subsection things are called. Everything's Azure, and right. you should just call it Azure. Right. Right. <laughs> that makes sense. It would be nice if they said that. Uh, I don't know why when you guys are going to just realize that <laughs> they're not gonna, Microsoft doesn't not gonna say anything. They don't say yeah. anything. Someone, needs, someone <laughs> needs to hit Microsoft with a simple stick and just keep hitting them and hitting them. You have they're been they're on for the four ground years. and you just don't stop. They just I, they just don't know how to communicate. They're not by good way, at this, maybe this is why they're so quiet all the time because when they open their mouths they come out with stuff like this. They get hoisted by their own petard. <laughs> yes. They do. Yes, actually, Mary Jo is another version, another um, another example of that. Uh, you know, there, it's a funny moment. I've been watching this new uh, uh, a show called Veep on uh, HBO. It's yeah. uh, yep. it's Elaine from uh, Seinfeld. Very funny. And in the very first episode, she she she's giving a speech and she makes a very politically incorrect joke, right. saying she was hoisted by her own retard. Yes. And the rest of the show is her trying to make up for this terrible thing that she said. So say it carefully. Yes. That's all I can say. But that's not why you were explaining this to your son. Uh, no. <laughs> no <it's not. laughs> it was, he was talking to Azure about, with his son about Azure. This week. And, then, and then my son said, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Azure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Patar. <laughs> That word is not pronounced the way you think it is. A petard is, I believe, a small explosive device. <laughs> okay. Seriously. Is it like throwing a grenade and it explodes in it's, your hand? It, it's a medieval explosive. And if you were hoisted by your own petard, you basically blew yourself up. Yes. Uh, your bomb blew you up. You were hoisted into the air by your own petard. <laughs> Fascinating. By the way, a, a note, a, a very exciting note for all of you. Uh, my uh, the high school that my kids go to, Abby graduated, but Henry's there now. I know you're you're laughing at me, Paul, but you're gonna uh -huh. this this is Germain, yeah, not German. I understand. Uh, uh, ha, was has a one to one laptop program. You you enter the school, they give you a laptop. It has been a Macintosh since the uh, beginning of the school in two thousand one. They yep. are switching to Windows this year. Wow! Because Apple. So it does not have an inexpensive education computer, and they can get a Lenovo ThinkPad for education. It's mil spec, so the kids can bang it around. I've seen this. That's actually a nice computer, by the way. For 500 bucks. And I had hoped that my son is going to the high school, so the high school in Dedham now has a mandatory laptop program as well. And we were looking forward to seeing what machine this would be. And you got to look this thing up because it is an absolute piece of crap. It is an. It's called an HP 100E. Oh no! It's only. It's only. Yes. Have you seen this thing? Yes. It, remember the original? I. I. What do you call it? The iBook. You know the toilet yeah. seat looking thing. Yeah. It looks like that. It is the most ridiculous looking piece of junk but I've ever cheap. seen. In my life. <laughs> it's. Yeah, it's, it's going to cost us a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's there it is. K through six. Uh, it's, and he, by the way, and he is in the ninth grade. Oh well, they shouldn't. Really. Seriously, like what? I, you know, so I said to my wife, "Could is can we just give him a real computer?" You know, I mean, I don't understand. He's it's not going to want to carry it. It's a netbook. It's a netbook. 
It's not just a netbook. It's a toilet seat a looking ki- netbook. It's a kid proof netbook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How ooh, terrible is that? That is really ugly. And you know, no yeah. kid wants to be this seen. This is worse this. than a computer he's already using. Yeah. But that's the point of these one to one programs is. Yeah, but there's kids children? who can have, yeah, that's to hurt them. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Were you trying to learn something here? <laughs> have fun with this. The kids, they, some kids don't have computers at home, and so we want a way. And it's it's expensive. You know, the cheapest Apple education notebook is a thousand bucks. It's a nine ninety nine MacBook Air, and the, the school just can't afford it. That might be the source of the eight hundred dollar MacBook Air rumor, by the way. That I would have that was what I was speculating actually on MacBook. In other words, Weekly. that might literally just be for the education market. They should do that. So, yeah. yeah, but even so, this Lenovo is half half the cost. So. That well, actually, the the big thing about that Lenovo is that's actually a nice computer. That, that is it. Lenovo, you, you recommend it? Yes. Good. Yep. Those are nice. Those are very nice. They don't sell those retail. No, you the have one to, that you have the to one get that you're school. getting through the school is yeah. not a retail. Yeah. Yeah. Those are nice. And it's mil spec. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can stop a bullet, Leo. You can, <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a killer keyboard. <laughs> does it? Of course, it does. Literally, it's, one... it's a literally a killer yeah, it's, keyboard. It's also a weapon. Yes, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you can kill somebody right. with it. Anyway, I thought you'd be you'd be happy to know that that's uh, that's what the school has decided on is they're going to get uh, get Lenovo education notebooks. Well, Lenovo has a whole education program. I mean, they're smart. Those, Chin- little, those yeah. Chinese companies, they know how to they know how to it's, talk to American schools. It's an age old strategy, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon the kids will be using Chinese. Um, before did we, we get, get to... You, go ahead. Well, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Did we get to the Bob Kelly story? Did you, were you no. no, no. No, I'm sorry. No. Continue on. We this get is, a little off track. This is more I mean, Azure. Azure is a compelling topic. <laughs> yeah, more Azure. <laughs> <laughs> I told Mary Jo this week that tools. more people have read her articles about Windows Azure than actually use the product. <laughs> Which could be true, actually. I um, thought the Microsoft people at NAB made a very compelling case for Azure. I thought he, he's, sure. he was well-spoken. Was we, the case that they made, Amazon has this thing and yes, now we, we have want, it too? So we mm-hmm. should do it. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I, I brought up Amazon, and I don't think he was really yeah. happy about that. Sure. <laughs> no. Our, our business model relies on you not having heard about that. <laughs> Never heard of them. Amazon, who's that? Yeah. Don't they sell well, stuff? Amazon actually this week made sure you heard who that was if you were a Microsoft developer because they announced some new things around AWS. They announced um, some more SQL Server support, some more ASP.NET support for their platform, the Elastic Beanstalk platform. Um, <laughs> I love, awesome. I love that name. I know. Isn't that a great name? That's an awesome name, actually. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there. it's funny to see what's happening. As Amazon is becoming more and more of a platform as a service company, even though they don't want to say that, Microsoft is going to be moving Azure more and more into an infrastructure as a service play, which they also don't really want to say. They don't want to say it that way because they're a platform as a service. So, they're heading towards even more of a collision course, basically. And well, um, and it's interesting because you can run ASP and uh, on Ash on uh, uh, Amazon, right? Amazon. Yeah. Yep. You can. So uh, yeah, yeah. They're direct so, competitors. So Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft's going to have some big announcements. I keep hearing um, maybe around TechEd in June mm-hmm. with Azure, and I think this is where you're going to hear more about them talking about how they're going to add I. AAS infrastructure as a service to their platform. So maybe that's where we'll hear about Linux on Azure uh, and some of the, some of those kinds of announcements. But this week they they did say during a webcast that they've now got high tens of thousands of customers for Azure. Wow. You know, it's pretty that's pretty good because 2 years ago they had 10,000 and I bet most of those 10,000 worked at Microsoft. <laughs> they had high t- high single digits of hundreds. <laughs> Right. So they're, they're, you know. they're getting there. They're adding hundreds a day, they say. Um, and they also accidentally said that they were going to have their CRM platform hosted on Azure before the end of this year. But that was a mistake. They actually meant their ERP platform. But anyways, I, they, I confuse the two, too. I, I understand. So that. do I yeah, yeah. all the time. They're both called Dynamics, so it's easy to make the error. Right. So there's, there's your Azure news for the week. I thought Linux. I thought Azure did support Linux. I'm surprised to hear it does not, because that's. I mean, that's a big portion yeah. of uh, it, what's what what people use Amazon for is Lamp Stack and stuff like that. Yeah, but what they do, they you can do it, but they're what they're going to add is a persistent virtual machine capability to Azure. They haven't announced this yet, but that's coming. And once you do that, then you'll be able to have 
your Linux instances working on Azure and be able to host Linux apps on top of Azure. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Um, enough Azure. Let's take a break. Come back with more momentarily. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley, and more Windows news and information coming up in just a bit. But I'm kind of excited um, to talk about uh, a new product from the folks at Citrix called, well, you, you might say, wait a minute, Go to Assist. That's not a new product. It is, in a way. We've talked before about Go to Assist as a really great tool for remote IT support. In fact, I use it with my mom. It's very, very easy to use. Uh, but they have expanded this now to really become a tool that any IT shop's going to want to use because you now have monitoring as well as support. Go to Assist monitoring with customizable dashboards, displaying performance on your networks, your servers, your desktop. Uh, our, what, we, what we did when they first, you know, they're just announcing this now, but we got an early uh, test of it. We gave it to Russell, our IT guy, Russell Tammany of uh, Exponentia. And he uses a tool that costs roughly five times more to do some of the same things. And uh, he, was, he said, this is great. This is amazing. Um, it, he, it allows him to manage. Now, he's a, a two- or three-man shop. He can manage 855 customers, not individual seats, 855 different companies, because it allows you to proactively fix problems before your clients even report them. Uh, it is, I've been using it here. Uh, what, you know, if our servers go down, I've had to come in or John has to come in. Now we've got it set on all our servers, all our machines in the, system, in the, uh, in the building, and we know about problems before they happen. We can remotely fix them. It's SaaS-based, purpose-built to give you more control of your IT world. You've got the remote support, but you also in the remote, remote access support, but you also have now this great monitoring, proactive monitoring. Uh, perfect example: uh, the toner cartridge went out. You know, we were we're at, we're low on toner, but we never knew it because Russell saw it on the dashboard and <laughs> had it and had it fixed before we even had a problem. It's all of those things. Run out of hard drive space, never again, because. IT knows ahead of time. This is a really great solution. I want you to try it free for 30 days, as always. Folks at uh, Citrix are really good about giving people a chance to uh, try this stuff before you buy. And they know that you guys are going to want to do it because you're sophisticated users. So visit gotoassist.com. And you can read about the new stuff that they've added. Um, if you want to be a managed service provider, for instance, if you're an IT guy and you think, I, you know, I'm good at this. I could be a managed service provider. This is the tool you want. Try it free for 30 days. Visit gotoassist.com, click the Try It Free button, and uh, you'll have to add a, a, a field for the promo code. It has name, address, and email. Click the promo code link and add the word Windows just so that we get credit for it. That'd be great. Just add the word Windows in the promo code field, and you can try it free for 30 days. Gotoassist.com. Brand new. If you haven't tried it, you've got to. You're going to love it. Spectacular. Moving along, Windows Weekly, the Windows Phone. What is it? What is it called? That that promo that they've been doing. I was smoked by Windows Phone. I smoked yep. my Windows Phone. <laughs> Windows Phone smoke smoke yep. more Windows Phone. I don't know. Four out of five doctors smoke Windows Phone. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> smoked by Windows. Smoked by Windows Phone. And so I didn't know this, but they've done this now with what fifty thousand people. Yeah, over 50,000 people. Jeez. And? They win a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, I, you know, it's easy to be a little cynical about that. But honestly, I, I, I guess the, the reverse way of looking at it would be, because obviously people are saying, well, Microsoft is stacking the decks by Yeah, because these are usually done at Microsoft stores, right? Uh, yeah, and a, yeah, trade shows and so forth. But, yeah. but but what I mean is, in other words, Microsoft knows those things that Windows Phone does well. So let's just, uh, you know, we'll make the tasks right. highlight those things. Right. But on the flip side, I would just say, if you look at the tasks that people are completing during these contests, they are, in fact, common tasks. And one might argue, again, on the flip side, that maybe Microsoft just designed Windows Phone to work well within those scenarios that people are actually using their smartphones for. So, I mean, maybe this is actually a way of, demonstrating that the design of Windows Phone is, in fact, better because they looked at what people really do on smartphones. I think, you know, regardless of how you feel about the whole campaign, it, it is at least getting the message out that, hey, these are fast phones. 
And they have yeah. to do that because uh, geeks are saying, well, it's a single sure. core process. Let, let me just th let me throw this out too. You know, Ben Rudolph, the guy who does this, unlike some of the other people they've thrown in front of the public, is he's actually good. kind of a cool guy. He shaves his yeah. head. You know, yep. he's cool. He's he wears cool. a hoodie. Yeah. That's yep. good. No, actually, he's pretty no, but funny. No, but he's seriously, pretty funny. A lot he's pretty of the, good. A lot of the Windows him. Phone stuff and the uh, you know the Zoom stuff before it suffered from kind of a, a right. faux coolness. Right. You know, and I actually think that this guy does a very effective job of... He reminds me a little of the Dangerous Jobs guy. What's his name? <laughs> okay. Doesn't he? That's good, though, but that's That's, that's cool. a good thing. No, he's, that's cool. A, it is dangerous to take on an iPhone yeah, user. Those guys are prickly. It's a dangerous job. So they got, you know, hip music. and I think these. I think it's a good campaign. Now, they, they're running ads with this, right? I don't know. You know, are these ads ever on TV? They're on... I don't you know, actually know. They should be. It's a not. web ad. Yeah, it's on Facebook, right? Yep. Well, I know they're on the web, but I mean, I, I, I would love to see these things on TV. I, I, I actually think that this is a nice viral type campaign that I would agree. play well on TV. Hey, I'm Ben. Today we're you know, betting not to mention the fact that a lot of people would look at this thing and be like, what, why have I never seen this before? Right, right. And they are giving people 100 bucks if you win. So, yeah. yep. so this guy's got an iPhone 4S. My Touch 4G, is that right? Yeah. At the HTC. So oh, they all different phones. We'll say something really amazing is happening. We want to take a picture of it really, really quickly. Okay. We'll take a picture and then we'll post to Facebook. Ready? One, two, three, go. Don't try this at home. Ben is a trained professional. <laughs> By the way, this person is an idiot. They pulled up the keyboard. They're doing all sorts of... I mean, i got to say, if you watch this and you use the phone that the competitor is using, you might say... Well, that person's not very good, very good at her phone. She had the keyboard oh, up. The, okay, she's sure. trying to take a picture. Why is the keyboard up? <laughs> she's just pushing buttons. Uses, I, I'm sorry, but that, you're talking There's about There's pressure. Design. There's pressure. It's like ah, ah, she's just you, pushing I think this buttons. Is this is easily explained. <laughs> okay, there are people who use iPhones. They're idiots. That's what you're going to say. Isn't <laughs> They're it? not sophisticated. They're not sophisticated. <laughs> They're just the world. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Well, uh, but I think, it, you know, I agree with you. It's a good campaign because it, the point is the point gets out. Right. Yep. Right. And I think that that is uh, that is that's that's all you can hope for with a marketing campaign is that you kind of get into the gestalt, into the awareness, into the zeitgeist. How many German words can I use that 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 Windows phone might be fast? Yes. Not just fast, but efficient. I think yeah. is the better way to right. say yeah. it. Now, last week we talked about Microsoft actually. Having a plan for the failure of Windows Phone was that last week? I wasn't. I w yeah, I'm not sure. I would say they have a plan for that. I, it's more along the lines of I think that this is the first. It, it's starting to come up. You know that maybe this it is, won't this be something we've asked in the industry. Right. You know, what, I mean, what are they going to do if this thing fails? Or the endless stories about how it's already too late for Microsoft to re-enter this market. Is, you know? Do we know how well it's selling? No, I actually think that you know. Uh, this quarter, with the Lumia 900 coming out, I think they're going to see a big jump. This I mean, would be the quarter. Big, I, I agree. I think they are going to see a market share increase this year overall. I do. Because until um, now, really, all the be... Windows phones just looked like, you know, Me Too phones. They look like, right. Android, like Android phones. phones that aren't Android. Exactly. Right. So, you know, I, I, when the when the year ends, you know, the, I guess the question is, if they have 5% market share, is that enough? You know, it would be over doubling what their market share is right now. So in some ways, that sounds pretty impressive. On the other hand, it also four, sounds like 5%. Four in the U.S. Four in the U.S. Mm -hmm. now, right? But, what is, but what, what, what is the benchmark? What do they need to do? I mean, why, I mean if you're making money on it, why, what, what does it matter if you're 4 or 5 or 10 or 20%? Well, because well, it's, are, it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? I mean, developers yeah. go where the platform are, you know, where the, people is, where the people are. And, you know, when none of that stuff is happening... The whole thing spirals in the other direction. We, we don't even know if they're making money on it, to be How honest. could you not you, make money on it? They Actually, license you know, the operating I, system, right? And right. so they and make some the money way, on that. Why do, they do, why do they do that? They should give away that. As the opposed to, oh, like Android, which is free. Yep. Yep. Well, they also make money by um, getting people who use Android to pay for patent royalty so they make a lot of money on Android. Money. Yeah, <laughs> they're doing you well know, on pay for the development of Windows Phone. Right. Right. Um, but we don't really know, you know, are they making money right now? Uh, they, we know in their last results that they actually paid money out to Nokia, right? They paid out to them for using Windows Phone. Uh, so that was a loss they took. Uh, for, that's how they could lose uh, money, sure. 
They paid like a hundred million dollars or something, right? It was expensive. Total well, payment to Nokia was yeah. a billion. A billion. I think um, this was, was part for, of what was specified from their original agreement, right? That they yes, it was. wasn't this the, the result of that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if you so if, you've, if you're paying a billion dollars to get Nokia to do it, you could lose money. Yeah. Okay. Now I yeah, understand. Yeah, now yeah, I yeah, understand. Yeah. Um, but you, but that sunk. That those are, that money sunk. Well, this, it, it's it, an investment. It's not. Yeah. You know, and there's like and there's money. a larger like they're literally investing in the future. Right. Here. And there's a larger strategic role that Windows Phone plays in yep. in the Windows 8 world. It's yep. introducing people to Metro. Look how well that's done for Apple, for instance. You know, uh, when they introduced the iPad, one of the taglines was "You already know how to use it," because yep. so many people had been using iPhones. It's just the same UI. How does um, that help Microsoft? I don't know. <laughs> well, but it, it, there's some halo <laughs> effect, I guess, is what yeah. I'm saying, yeah, isn't yeah. there? So you might. I don't know. Might you buy? It might go the wrong might you. direction. Might I mean, you. might you buy a Windows Phone and then I say, "Gee, I, w I should try this." I hear there's an uh, there's a desktop operating system like this. Maybe I should try that. I guess not. There's no, I, I think that is the plan, Maybe. and I think for the first time yeah. this year they'll have that right cohesive UI strategy. Even okay. though they're not all identical, uh, they'll be similar. Enough. I guess I guess it's reasonable to say that there's no one in the world who hasn't heard of Windows. It's not like. You know, you're you're informing people of something they don't know. Yeah, but that's like saying there aren't a lot of people that haven't heard of Exxon, and then the first thing you think of with Exxon is the Valdez yeah, oil spill. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean it's a good feeling. Um, yeah, I've heard of that Windows uh, Vista. Oh, does that mean they brought the blue screen of the phone? Yeah, that's <laughs> the great. Blue screen. That's, that's what I want. You're right. I want to you're right. right. You know, I, so, and that's maybe the smoke, the smoked by Windows Phone campaign. Maybe all of this stuff redounds to the benefit of Windows in general and Microsoft in general. So maybe mm -hmm. that's why you do this, even if you don't get more than a few percentage market share. Yes? I hope so. I mean, I, I really do. Yeah. I, I, you know, they said they were going to stick with Zune and, and didn't. And um, yeah. obviously, as we discussed last week, Windows Phone is more central to their strategy. And I think it's important and it's something they should stick with. But, you know, I, the problem I have with Windows Phone is that we're always looking for that next thing, that one thing that's going to put us over the, right. the hump, you know. Uh, people weren't going to buy the first-gen devices because it didn't have this. And then they fixed, you know, copy and paste, and they added multitasking in 7 and 5. Well, yeah, yeah, okay, but now we want this. Now, now supposedly, if God, if they just had device encryption, uh, oh, uh, enterprises would roll those things <laughs> out. Yeah, and, you know, they're going to add that in 8. And then, yeah. I, you know, there's always going to be a reason. And, and I, that's not, you know, that's just not sustainable over a long period of time. You know, at some point, they got to get people to just buy the damn thing, you know? <laughs> right? I mean, you can't, right. it can't always be something that's right. coming down the pike. So if Windows Phone fails, yeah, what is your cunning plan? <laughs> Do you ever watch Black Adder? <laughs> yes, I love Black Adder. So you really remember uh, his little yes. cohort there always had a cunning plan, yes, you yes. know? <laughs> Baldrick. You know? Baldrick. Baldrick. There are apes in the Andes that have figured this out, you know? So... Um, I actually think that Microsoft could make an interesting push for a Windows Phone product using the Android platform. And that all they really need to do is, is put their Windows Phone UI on top of it. Anyone can use Android. It's free. And uh, as we know, everyone's already licensing all the Windows technologies that they're stealing anyway. So why not just use it? You'll have instant app compatibility with all the Android apps out there if you want it. But they could handle it like Google does with their own phones where that switches off where you accept apps from other uh, stores and they'll have their own Windows store where they'll just create their own uh, apps and, and curate apps for their own store like Amazon. puts his foot in it. <laughs> this is not Black a Adam. joke. I do not find my name remotely funny and people who do end up dead. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel tonight at 1800 hours in which you will die. Yours with sincere apologies for your impending violent slaughter, Arthur Wellesley, Duke of Wellington. Sounds a nice, polite sort of bloke. This is Baldrick. Oh, don't worry, sir, please. Baldrick Just is consider the, the little scummy looking valley guy. Yeah. Woe, filled with pain, misery, hunger, and despair. Well, not for me, it bloody isn't. As far as I'm concerned, life is a big palace full of food, drink, and comfy sofas. May I speak, sir? Certainly not, Baldrick. The prince is about to die. The last thing he wants to do in his final moments is exchange pleasantries with a certified plum duff. <laughs> Let's hear him out. Very well, Warwick. We shall hear you out, then throw you out. <laughs> well, Your Majesty, I have a cunning plan. Which... <laughs> All right, there we go. Long so way to go. So he would say this in almost every episode. He had a cunning I plan. I have a it cunning was, plan. <laughs> it was never particularly cunning. <laughs> no, of course not. So your cunning plan. <laughs> Just use Android. Use Android. It's a cunning plan. 
Or You'll, you immediately have the instant application compatibility with all the hundreds of thousands sure, of apps they have. And you can sure. build your own, just like HTC puts Sense on top of Android, and <laughs> I'm sure Samsung does something silly on top of Android. You can do whatever you want to Android. You could do to the phone market what uh, Amazon did to the tablet market with the Kindle Fire. You can do but, your own thing with it. But by, it could literally by work. And backing just like what Android. But by backing Android, isn't Microsoft kind of backing Google and saying, hey, you know what? This operating system that we've said is violating all our patents. Yeah, we're going to back yeah. it. But if Microsoft uses it, it doesn't. They're not. They can't violate their yeah. own patents. And you know, I, look, this is obviously the last ditch. You know, everything else failed. Why not? I mean, right. uh, the problem with Android, as far as I'm concerned, well, is that it's horrible and it, I hate it. But I mean, the, the, it's just terrible to use, terrible to look at. I mean, the Windows Phone UI. I just one, one of the reasons you love Windows Phone is. The user interface and all of the you know efficiencies you get with that, it's the same hardware. It would be very yeah. easy to move that thing over it's, to. It would uh, be caving. Come on, let's face it. It, it would. Well, no, that, but right. that's the point of this. <laughs> I'm would, not saying no, no. You don't 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 misunderstand. I'm not saying Microsoft should do this. It would I'm be saying total capitulation. If Windows Phone completely fails. Right. Well, it would be there like Microsoft saying, "Oh, the Zune failed. Let's license iPod software." It would just be like. It would be admitting that everything <laughs> they had ever done was was well, a waste of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, some, there's something to be said for that uh, with regards to Zoom. But, okay. I don't know. I, I can't see them doing that. Mm. I just think that they need a mobile platform in the How important? Why do they need a mobile Because this is where the world's going? No, they, they because they sell to so many different markets, you know. Uh, they need something that they, in other words, how about like a hardened version of Android that had all of this, uh, not, not just the basic Exchange Active Sync controls, but more than that, you know, this kind of the Windows RT uh, management stuff they're barely talking about for, you know, Windows 8 slash ARM. Uh, they could apply that to the phones. You know, why not? You know, it, it would give users what they want, which is Android, but it would give enterprises what they want, which is more control. So you put Metro on top of Android? Sure. Yeah, because then you're still selling the UI. You're yep. still getting, yeah, okay, okay. And and Android certainly is customizable. Look, I mean, look at the Kindle Fire. There's no magic. Apparently, anyone can do whatever they want. They can do to whatever it, so. you want. But, it already so runs on exactly the same. And we are, and as what? and Ms. Mary Joe said, we already have the patents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, but what happens to your developers? Okay, oh, I mean, they just die. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's the central issue this week, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because you've got these people who've been loyal enough to bet on you in your early days. They've already built 80,000 or 90,000, whatever the total is now, Windows Phone 8 apps. Uh, and so you're going to say to them, guess what, guys? We're not doing this. Yes. And you know what? You can bring your apps over to Windows 8 maybe. But otherwise, now you've got to be Android developers. That's why it's capitulation. It's basically... I actually think that the... I don't think there's a technical reason why Windows Phone apps couldn't run on Android, actually. I think that would. I think that would be the least difficult part of this. Really? Huh. Well, yeah. wait, but no, Android's based on a, on Java. Right. But that Java is this runtime engine that runs on top of this ARM hardware, basically. Right. I mean, why, why not just have whatever Microsoft's runtime is sitting next to it? Oh, I see. You put you put uh, WinRT or whatever the hell they call it. I mean, Windows Phone 8 is going to use a similar method to run Windows Phone 7X apps. So what's the difference? Yeah. That's it's not native. I mean, it's just, you yeah, know, it's just nothing is really native of, anymore. Right. Just, no, no, you things, don't need to. Yeah. You know, we all made fun of Java when they came out 15 years ago, or whatever that was, and you know, because it was slow and it was. Remember, they used to call these things virtual machines, right, not right. not virtual machines as we now think of them, but no, you yeah. know, software sense, kind of, sort of, um, yeah. All these platforms are essentially uh, that model. Uh, yeah. There's no reason that that couldn't happen. But anyway, the, the bigger issue, of course, is they're already screwing developers right now, uh, in my opinion, and uh, we'll see how they react to this. And next month, there's going to be a big developer event in San Francisco where Microsoft will reveal their plans for uh, the developer platform for Windows Phone 8 and probably more, too. I think we'll just talk about Windows Phone 8 in general, hopefully. Um, and things are changing. And I think this is a it's a little bit of a tough thing because they're making this transition to Windows 8, which uses Windows RT, WinRT, you know, the Windows Runtime and Metro. Uh, Windows Phone 7X uses Silverlight and XNA, both of which are dead. So that stuff all has to change. It is going to change. Um, the legacy of the existing apps will all still run, of course, um, but new apps, you know, going forward, are going to have to use this new environment. 
and it's going to be interesting to see how what the transition is there, um, what that's going to be like. Uh, I, I I'm not a full time developer, obviously. Um, I grok the Windows Phone developer tools very easily. I, I I think they're clean and excellent, and they work really well. And I look at the stuff. I've not seen Windows Phone 8 developer tools, but I look at Windows 8, which I, my understanding is going to be very close to what you have for Windows Phone 8. And I have a very hard time with it. And uh, and I'm not, I know I'm not the best judge of this because I don't do it full time, but um, I'm very curious to see how developers react to this change. Very curious. And how they're going to get the Windows Phone 7 apps to work on Windows Phone 8. I mean, there's going to have to be some porting involved, right? It's not going to just automatically happen if they're really changing the operating system at a deep level I think, I think and changing no, no, I a think lot of I think they're just going to run. I think they will run. You do? I think it's just, yeah, run, I think it's just even a matter of how to Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess the question is going to be... I'm guessing they're going to have to do something. Well, developers are going to have to... Obviously, they're going to want to update their apps. So they're going to be in this weird situation where right. you've got some very mature app developed in, say, Silverlight, and you're going to have to use the old version of Visual Studio targeting this environment, and you'll update that app. But eventually, probably not in Windows Phone 8, but maybe Windows Phone 8.5 or 8.9.0, you know, whatever it is, they're going, to, they're going to have to start shutting that stuff down at some point. And uh, I just don't know how they're going to... I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how they're going to make this transition. I am curious about it. Um, but my understanding... And also, what will that, the role of X and A be, right, in the new world? What Because in is, is, in Win RT, <laughs> in Windows RT, no X and A, right? You can't be, no, develop a much style it's app. It's all direct yeah. Which is confusing because they've said... In their own blog post, they've said, we're not abandoning XNA with Windows Phone 8 either. either. So no. I don't know what well, that means. Run. Exactly. I mean, the XNA apps will run. They, and by the way, yeah. there are hundreds and hundreds, thousands, whatever, of uh, XNA games. games. Many, many of right. all those Xbox Live games are XNA games. Yep. Um, yeah, a lot of people have really gone to town. They, they added some great XNA capabilities in 7.5, you know, the ability to bring in uh, Silverlight components and mix and match, you know, and Silverlight obviously has those great UI components. So if you have a game that needs to put up a menu or whatever, in the past, you used to have to hand create that stuff. And now you can use the Silverlight standard menus and you can, you know, you can make them look like your game. You don't, they don't have to look like, you know, Silverlight or uh, Metro style interfaces. But, you know, they made it very easy to do that. And that, that was nice. And now it's going away. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. this is I mean, part they're not the even problem. using the words Silverlight, right? Like, they're not even saying Silverlight necessarily will be supported. They're saying it's going to be XAML, which is what they say in Windows 8 now and yeah, well, it's going to be right it will be something based on windows rt it won't be exactly right. the same as which is by the way another confusion right you could make yeah. this argument right. well they're making the switch over but at least they're going to use windows rt so it'll be the same as windows 8 and it's like well my understanding is it's not exactly the same as the one in windows 8 it's like windows phone rt you know not windows rt so i we'll see i mean i right. you know, again, like they're having this big event. yeah yeah and, and of course and to be fair there there will be there are unique capabilities of phones that don't or aren't necessary in the desktop version of Windows. And so the Windows phone version of RT or whatever will have those capabilities. So, I mean, there'll be some stuff in Windows phone that's not in Windows, which is fine and that makes sense. But I'm just curious. I, I Like I said, I, I was able to grok how Windows phone development worked very quickly and easily. It's just, it's so nice. And then you look at the Windows 8 stuff and it's like, ugh. It's just, it's, it's, it, look, it looks, it looks hard to me. Again, not yeah. a full-time developer. I get it. So, but I want to talk to people about this stuff. I, I intend to go to some, uh, uh, they're doing those traveling shows with Windows 8 development, which I'll be attending one. Um, I'm surprised. That comes by it's, Boston. It's I, so, I want to learn. More. I'm surprised it's so different, to be honest. Is it the tools or is it the API? No, it's, well, it, yeah, so it's SDK a new version of Visual Studio. Vis Visual Studio is Visual Studio. Yeah, I mean, they're, that they're, doesn't change. Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, it does change, but it's, yeah, you know, Visual Studio. Yeah, okay, fine. Right. You know, you still hit F5, to, you know, but, to compile. Is the, the SDK work. so... Uh, yeah, the SDK, is, it's the APIs, right? So in other words, um, ever since .NET came out, you know, a decade or so ago, Microsoft has been working on these, what I think of as managed APIs, .NET-based APIs. You know, .NET Framework is one path. There's the right. Windows Presentation Foundation stuff and all, the, you know, WPC right. and so forth. Um, Silverlight is another path, a kind of a strange alternative to WPF, very similar but different. Um, they use that for Windows Phone, obviously. Um, and then we have Windows, you know, WinRT. And WinRT is a, yet another new .NET-based API set, you know, SDK. And um, 
you know, it, it has this overlap. It's the same languages. If you know C Sharp or Visual Basic, it, those languages are in there. You can still use them. But the APIs are different. And so you kind of have this notion in your head, well, this is how notifications work, or this is how I update the live tile. And now you have to go and look at the APIs and see how those things have changed. It's, it's odd to me that it wasn't really as, as much based on the way Windows Phone works as maybe you would think. And I think that's where the comparison, uh, the uh, confusion yeah. is going to be. Yeah, of course. Uh, imagine the, you know. But I think that's move, true for iOS, right? I don't think that iOS, the API stuff has actually never changed that dramatically. Apple has evolved their Xcode, uh, Xcode tools, right? So now there's only one developer tool. Where they used to have several, right? right. Different things. You no, sign right. UI over here. Right. You would right. just write the code over here. They, they put all that stuff together. But God, I'll tell you, if you go back and look at the next stuff, from you know 1996, that stuff. It is. is it's all next. Exactly step. the same. Oh, yeah, it's God, all next. It's step. Exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. So I look at it like I, I and maybe you know people will disagree with me on this maybe, but if you know a C language like a C like language C C plus uh, plus C sharp Objective C whatever Java, and then you have to use another C like language. It's those little differences that are going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, in yeah. some ways, you're better off not knowing any of those right, languages. Right. You're going to move one Starting from scratch, yeah. I think. I mean, that's yeah. my opinion. And I, I, and I look at the transition from Serverlite, XNA, to XAML, um, you know, WinRT, DirectX in Windows Phone 8 or in Windows 8 as being the same kind of transition where you recognize right. that it's, you know, very clean, managed APIs, .NET based. But they're all, not all, but many of them are, are different. And... It's it's just a difficult transition, I think. But again, I, I'd be happy to be proved wrong on this, and I do want to talk to people uh, who are develop, you know, are actually writing code for these environments. And um, certainly at the Windows Phone event that I hope to attend, um, I'll talk to people there as well and see what they think about it. I, I, I want to learn more, but this I, I think is going to be a fairly painful transition for developers. I feel like it really is like it's a reset. Right. It's this is the Windows Phone reset. It's trying to get everybody who's a developer on the same page. And it's yeah. I think it is going to be a painful transition. But we, we've talked about this on the show before. Better now than later. Right. Like, OK, well, except, they, they, they already reset. That's the, the thing that bugs me is yeah. Windows Phone itself was a reset. I, I, there might sure. be an argument to be made that the, the jump from Windows Phone 7X to 8 may be as big of a reset as what Windows Phone 7 was from a developer perspective. Maybe. Again, I'd love to be proven wrong on that, but um, but this this also helps explain why we keep hearing you're not going to be able to upgrade your existing phone to Apollo Windows Phone eight operating system. I mean, this whole if if well, the changes really are this big, maybe this is part yeah. of the reason why. I would love to see them. You know, someone uh, people will uh, delight in forwarding me stories where some guy from Nokia, you know. It, uh, hints that maybe there will be some transition is if I somehow invented this notion that Microsoft's not going to upgrade people. I would love to be proven wrong on this. And, and I say that with air quotes because somebody from Microsoft explicitly told me this, but you know, I'd, I would love for them to reverse direction and actually support some form of upgrade. I, there, are, there are all these processes that people have sort of fantasized about that. Either they would just provide a subset of eight to Lumia devices, or they would make like a Windows Phone 7, 6 that would include some subset of those new features, whatever. I would be ecstatic for them to do something like that. I've heard nothing like that from anyone at Microsoft, but I, I would love that. I would be, I'd be very happy for that to happen. Um, but, you know, when I bought the Lumia 900, I went into it knowing that that was never going to happen, and I still think it's a good buy. I think it's a great phone. Um, but, you know, my understanding as of now is that that's, what, that's not going to happen. But, again, maybe June comes and we go to this event and... Maybe they say, yeah, we are going to do some kind of a subset of Windows Phone 8 for existing users. It, that's a huge win. I'd be very happy for that to happen. I like, I've got a quote from one of our listeners on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He said, only people, the only people who will find it difficult to move from Windows RT to Silverlight are programmers. Any programmer should be able to move on. <laughs> a programmer? You know, the whole Paul's program. A, Paul's a programmer. No, what is program? What does that mean? Oh, uh, well, you know, bros. Oh, Bros are like guys who wear tank tops, you know, they lift. <laughs> and there's a whole, and I think it's specious, but it's certainly offensive yeah. to any female who's a though. programmer. It's funny. But All it's, right, so I, I'm, I'm sure I qualify as a programmer, absolutely. But it, <laughs> like I said, I want to talk to people 
that actually do this. And so we'll see. I will I will talk to people. I, I'm very curious to see what we've got really volunteers in the happens. chat room. Uh, there are a number of people in the chat room said, oh, it's not that it's not that difficult. OK, but the, I, uh, then I'd like to how should they reach? Out, how should uh, they get a hold of you if they want to? Uh, it's uh, MJF at. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, I'm no, I'm no programmer. Don't no, give them my email. no, <laughs> don't tase me, programmer. Paul at WindowsITPro.com. All right, Paul at WindowsITPro.com. I want if you're Windows a programmer and you actually looked at Windows and, RT. And if you're really an expert on this, don't just like spout off. But if you've, if you've done development on both platforms, you have extensive yeah. experience doing it. I want people who, who actually program for Windows Phone and have looked at Windows 8 and said, yes, this is great. Yeah. I want to hear that from somebody. That's what he's looking for. Not, you know, Paul, you ignorant slut. Not that. Abs ab no, that's fine. I won't <laughs> prove me wrong. It's not Windows IT, bro. I am not a man of conviction, Leo. I can be <laughs> I, can, I can be swayed. It takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. I am not a big man. <laughs> no, I am. I'm, like, I absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to be proven wrong. <sighs> I think this is, you know, one of those things where, you, you know, everybody has an opinion. And I don't know if there's a right answer to that. Um. Well, I mean, all I'm saying is I've looked at. It. I think I mean, you've I'm made. Not, it. I think you could. I think you're from Mount Olympus. I agree. Like no, I agree, and I think you can make your case, and I think anybody who disagrees can probably make their case. But uh, I don't think it's cut and dried necessarily. It's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Not? Well, it may be a matter of fact. Let's find out. You know, let's. Is it? Is it? Or is it not difficult to make this transition? Right. Generally speaking, I'd love to know the truth. Behind it. Well, and you know how you'll know is when Windows 8 ships and you hear howls of pain. Or you see a bunch of Windows Phone apps easily ported right. to, Windows, to Windows 8. When, when, wait, when, you, when I get Angry Birds on Windows 8, then I'll know. <laughs> well, <laughs> when, hey, they can get Angry Birds on the web. Putting it on That's Windows on 8 is going to be an yeah, issue. You can get on anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Samsung Focus 2. That's pretty much all we have to say about that one. Uh, right there. Right there. That's I it. I wanted that phone to be cool. You know, well, just as a background, I think it was December or early January, we talked about some Windows phone marketing information and all that stuff. And, and there were three phones we had found out. They were um, codenamed at the time. I think Sword was the one that became the Lumia. There was Mandel, which became this phone, the Samsung Focus 2. And then there was the phone that became the HTC Titan 2, which might have just been called Titan 2. I don't remember, but... Um, those phones were all supposed to ship according to this document on March 18th. That was the date. And none of them actually shipped on that date. And I think it was April when the, um, the Titan II and the Lumia came out, if I'm not mistaken. And then the Mandel just shipped now. And these are the AT&T based LTE Windows Phone 7.5 devices. And, and this one, unfortunately, given, given the timing, it's kind of lackluster, you know, so it comes out after the other two, it comes out after the initial generation, uh, initial wave of second generation devices. So it's got LTE, but the rest of it is like um, not particularly compelling. It only has a five megapixel camera. Uh, I believe it only has eight uh, megabyte or uh, gigabytes of storage, and um, it's white, which is neat. It, it looks nice, but I think given the quality of the Lumia 900 and even to a lesser extent the Titan 2, which is decent, um, it's too bad. Like this, this phone. Last October, November would have killed. This would have been, right? No doubt, the best of the new generation devices at that time. But as of today, it's like, well, it's a little, little weak. Um, Windows Phone Eight. We kind of talked about this going to be yeah, like Longhorn. We kind of talked about. It. So let's let's talk about Bing. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a Bing <laughs> facelift going on, huh? I haven't. I, yeah, so, they announced this today. Let me let me go. Is it is it is it already in place? No. Yes. Yeah, early. Uh, well, oh, no. Sorry. It's, just the announcement is in place. I think. <laughs> okay, but they haven't. The, the, uh, they, 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 it hasn't changed. No, it looks the same. They have, they have photos of what it's going to look like, so you can go and see. Yeah. Uh, right. And you this will be when Bing. when you yeah. do a oh, search. I mean, click, the, click the link in the um, show notes. Oh, here it is. The new Bing is yeah. coming soon. Look at this. It's right in the top. Yeah. Sign me up. So if you go to Bing.com, you can say, I want to be part of this new, uh, the new Bing. I do want to yep. be part of the new I Bing. I want to be. So, but they also want you to like Bing on Facebook, tweet about Bing, and write for your Bing blog. And right. Bing it, too. Bing it. Forget that. 
Can Which, you by the way, speaking of Veep, they use that term on Veep, right? I'm going to remember that. That's guys. right. It was very funny. I'm going to bing it. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> Paid placement, no doubt. No, 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 no. I think they were making a little joke. Where they yeah, okay. I think they were making a little Well, joke. so the new Bing, the new and improved Bing, which they say is their biggest facelift since the three years ago time when they launched Bing. Wow. Uh, it's mostly about social. It's like they did some work with Facebook, they said, and they are integrating social more seamlessly. There's a new search pane where you can, like, have your friends off to the side, see what they're doing, liking, um, searching for all that. Uh, I've... I maybe I'm in the minority on this. I don't know. I don't really care what my friends like when I'm searching. <laughs> I really either. just don't care. Like Paul said, he liked the certain sushi restaurant. Would it make me more inclined to go there? Probably not. Even though I know he's a sushi connoisseur, but no, I, I just don't. I don't like this whole social integration into search. I'm not a fan of this. But I know there are people who are, and if you are, you're going to like the new Bing. So where does the, you know, so they're show, I'm showing the video right now. It says, I'm going to Honolulu this yeah. summer. Where's a good sushi restaurant? And then you can post that. Where does that post go? To Facebook? Or is there some sort of, is it? Is it, it looks a, like it. A yeah, Windows Live? A where, where, I, I mean, bet it does go to Facebook. I yeah. bet it pushes through to Facebook. It says you can try there's it at bing.com slash news. So maybe let's try it. Let me see. Yeah, there's a there's two panes. There's a snapshot pane, and then there's a sidebar. And I think the sidebar is where you see all what's going on with your friends. Um, well, everybody's that, doing this now. I mean, this is they are they are all doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just doing Everyone's it very. Doing it. Uh, I think they're doing it in a way that, that respects people's privacy a little more than perhaps some other company that does search named Google. Um, <laughs> and <they're, laughs> just to narrow it down a bit. Just to narrow it down a bit. <laughs> And they, they even said in today's announcement they're um, integrating Google Plus to some extent as, as one, of the, one of the social feeds here. So it's like they're saying to Google, hey, you're having trouble integrating Twitter and Facebook results in your search. But we're not only doing that, we're even going one step above that. We're integrating G your own social network, Google Plus. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Anyway. Well, it's, uh, you know, social uh, in search is, is the trend. You know, it's very trendy right now. And uh, I kind of with you, Mary Jo, I just find me the right website. I don't really need to know. Yeah. You know. But if God you help search me if I get a live Facebook update in the middle of a search. Oh, you know? yeah. I don't really <laughs> like, hey, I saw on Facebook you were searching for a restaurant. Well, like, but, uh... but remember, Google in its little experiment was having a real t what they called real time search, where if you'd search for something and there's Twitter stuff going on, they would po pump it into there. I, God, they dumped that when they lost the uh, deal with Twitter, but I think that that's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I think B, I always thought of Bing as being the the, the leader in this ahead of because they integrated Facebook yeah. very early. Yeah, like at the, I agree. Yeah, Microsoft does a good job with the Facebook integration, they, they, but they do uh, surprisingly, but maybe not yeah. surprisingly since they've made an investment in Facebook. Um, but you know, the the other interesting thing that happened in Bing this week was two days ago. They do this periodically, just like Google does. They, they try things out on, on the wider public without telling you they're testing it on you so you don't know you're part of the right. guinea pig group. And they were testing this thing where if you searched, if you went to bing.com and you entered a search, it would suddenly open all your results in another window or another tab, depending on which browser you, you were using. And people were flipping out about this. I mean, people thought their browser was broken, something was wrong with their PC, what was going on? Because Microsoft didn't tell anyone they were testing right, it. They just started testing. Yeah. And so yesterday they they said, yeah, this is part of a test. And I don't know if this test was supposed to be integrated into, t into today's announcement or not, but there were so many people who hated it and were sending negative feedback to Bing that they had to pull the test um, yesterday. So they just had to undo it and stop it. So I give them credit for responding quickly to the negative feedback, but I don't love that. <laughs> I don't love that I was part of a control group without knowing I was part of the control group. I don't like that. It's you can't do it without obscuring without the fact that you're doing it. <laughs> yes, I right. I mean, I know. once they become aware of your existence, the test is void. Yeah. Uh oh! We talked about this last week. We thought it was a, a bogus rumor. It's not the ninety nine dollar Xbox. It's, well, the, it's kind of a trial, I think, is the way to look at it. I, you know, I'm I I've been trying to think about who this is for. The idea being that you 
only pay ninety nine up front to get an Xbox and a Connect, but that then yeah. you pay uh, fifteen bucks a month, right? Now you get the gold account. So what is what is the cost of a gold? It account? works out so. Sixty bucks a year for a gold account. Okay, is if you just bought it. The bundle that so they're selling for ninety nine. If you bought that, would be three hundred dollars. So, uh, four hundred and twenty dollars. This is what this stuff would cost if you actually bought it. Um, over the lifetime of this uh, agreement, you are spending four hundred and sixty dollars. So it's only forty dollars more over two years, which oh, is well, that's not bad. Dollars per month. Yeah, it's not too bad. I, I'm more nervous about the kind of wider implication of this. You know that. Because obviously Microsoft wants you paying a little bit every month. You know, this is beneficial to Microsoft. Um, I, th I just feel like we have too much of this stuff in our lives already, you know, that we it, – it, it's, it's sneaky, you know, because when you explain how much this is per month, it doesn't sound bad. And uh, I think people agree to do this a little too much, and then they suddenly realize, oh, my God, it's like several every, hundred dollars yeah, yeah. going out every month toward, like, these entertainment services. That's that I what I think. Have. People are kind of getting sensitized to another $15 a month subscription. Yeah. You could you could spend the next two years playing Kinect games on your Xbox and never once use Xbox Live. Right, right. Um, right. So that may be uh, something you're paying for that you may ultimately decide you don't want. I mean, um, there are absolutely benefits of having Xbox Live Gold, but... I don't think it applies to all people, especially, um, you know, the casual gamers that would be interested in a Kinect type game anyway um, aren't necessarily. And that's who this is for. This is for people who might even see it as a set-top box rather than a gaming yeah. device. Yeah, sure. Yep. Or people who, well, first, you have to be a first-time Xbox Live subscriber. So people oh, who well, that leaves me always out. Oh, you can't do this for, like, your second Xbox. Wow, well, I mean, you could probably start a new. Uh, yeah, maybe you start a new account. Yeah, yeah, but so so it's for those people who think, oh, ninety nine bucks, okay, I'll pay that. I've never thought about an Xbox before, and also the other weird caveat to this deal is you have to go physically into a Microsoft store to do this. Yeah. So that that's that, a where are only that? sixteen where are Microsoft stores. I don't even. Where is one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You there's actually be have one a few in the San in Francisco California. Bay Area. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure yeah. there's a bunch yeah. there. Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me check Google and see. <laughs> no, actually, you just go to um, <laughs> store.microsoft.com. You can uh, have, uh, just Google Maps. I was going to search. Google I'll ask Siri. So, Maybe yeah. Siri will know. Siri Microsoft may know Store. where you can go. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, my my thought after I saw that caveat was, huh? You know what? Maybe this is a way to actually promote the Microsoft Store as much it is as it is to promote yes, the Xbox. I would, like yes. they're That's what giving it you is. a reason to go to the store. That's what right? it is. And then they jump you and say, "I'm going to smoke <laughs> your phone." <laughs> right. While you're here, let me smoke you your phone. All kinds of things at the Microsoft <laughs> Store. <you know? laughs> Let's smoke my phone. Let me see. There's one in uh, Palo Alto. That's the only one in the. Uh, it looks like uh, in the that's area. It, huh? Yeah. Uh, right, uh, that's the one they probably opened across the street from the Apple Store, from yeah, Steve Jobs' typical, uh, Apple typical Store. Typical locations: Scottsdale, yeah. Costa Mesa, Los Angeles, Mission Viejo. So there's three in the LA area. Palo Alto, well, one that's San coming Diego. to Boston uh, next week will be at the Prudential, which is right across the street from the. That's Apple good. Store. The shops at Prudential, Bloomington, Minnesota, Bridgewater, New Jersey, Freehold, New Jersey. Austin, yeah, they're not all over the place. So you're, I, no, you're right. This is none here. This is more not even a single one in New York. That's bizarre. Yeah. So far, I mean, there will be, of course. So I far, think there one will in New be. Jersey, though. Uh, yeah, two in New Jersey. Uh, oh, two in Freehold uh, and Bridgewater. Yep. Freehold's coming soon. Remember, like four and or five of these are not actually there. They look yeah, so one's much got, like the one's coming there. to Long Island. Yeah. Uh, sometime. I think year. I think you hit the nail on the head. This is not an Xbox promotion. This is an, a Microsoft Store promotion. Store. Be. Yep. That's what this is. All right, we're going to get to uh, your picks and tips of the week in just a moment. But first, I'm going to do a promotion for an electric vehicle. Let's talk. <laughs> do you, you, would you ever buy an electric car, Paul? Yes. I think you, you seem like you might. I would. I kind of, uh, I've been wanting this. Uh, the problem right now is I got nowhere to plug it in. Right. You need a garage. I'm just is hoping. This be the, is this the Ford Focus one? Yeah, I like that car. It's a nice oh, looking car. It's sweet. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the one I think I'm going to get is the hybrid, the plug-in hybrid. So you plug it. It's a like an electric car. You plug it in. Yep. Uh, uh, and charge it up. And if you only go, uh, let me see what the distance is for the battery only. If you only go um, <laughs> thirty-seven feet. 
No, no, actually it goes quite a ways. I think it's like 30 <laughs> miles or something. Then it'll yeah. stay on the, uh, ba- on, the, on the battery, but if you want to go farther, it'll turn on the gas. Yeah, so there are people who could commute with this and never exactly. use gas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Slightly better than the average SUV. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> they also do, and they're doing some really smart IT stuff. You know, your, your uh, phone um, can actually manage the recharge process, uh, determine the most eco-friendly driving route. So you know how GPS traditionally has fastest and, lo- and shortest? They have a third one now on the Ford Sync GPS, most, uh, most fuel efficient. You can... Um, you, you can actually set it and say only charge during the uh, off-peak hours. They call that the value charging feature powered by Microsoft. Allows Ford customers to take advantage of off-peak or reduced rates from their utility without a complicated setup process. The 2012 Ford Electric is available now at EV certified dealers. It's 100% electric. I mean, it is no, no gas. Never needs an oil change. Uh, the batteries, they've really uh, done a lot of work on these batteries. That's why it gets a range best in class of 76 miles. And uh, the, the, the gas rating is 110 miles per gallon MPGE, which is the equi- MPG equivalent. 110 is also the best city rating in its class. The best in class 240 volt charge time. You can charge it when you connect it to the uh, uh, home charging station in about four hours. Half the time it gets to charge the Nissan Leaf. Four hours. So you could, uh, and see, so, you know, this is why you could uh, you could drive to work even if you work with, say, like 60 or 70 miles away if you've got a charger at work. And more and more, that's what's happening. That's what I'm waiting for the city of Petaluma to put in a charger. If you go to the Oakland airport, the best parking at the Oakland airport parking is for electric vehicles. And they plug in and it's free. Re- refuel free. The 2013 Ford Fusion Energy plug-in hybrids coming in 2013, early 2013. That'll get an MPGE of over 100. One, over 100 MPGE, which is amazing. Uh, you get the My Ford mobile access to the Ford website and smartphone app, so you can access your vehicle status, state of charge, current range, program charge settings, download vehicle data for analysis. Of course, it uses regenerative braking, which means that you you actually charge the battery when you tap the brakes. It's pretty cool. In fact, it recovers over 90% of the energy that would be normally lost in uh, during braking uh, with a regenerative braking. That's very cool stuff. And, of course, they, uh, the, the My Ford Touch and the Sync have special optimizations for electrified driving. I think the best thing to do would be to go to an EV-certified Ford dealer and drive one. I, I can't wait. And uh, and if you want to find out more, you can also read about it at Ford.com slash technology. The, the, the Focus Electric is here. I've been waiting for it. <clears throat> but but now I'm thinking maybe the hybrid. I, it's so It's so exciting. Some very cool vehicles from Ford Motor Company. Drive one today, Ford.com slash technology. And now, Paul Therat. By the way, before we get to the picks, yes. um, a source I do trust uh, just told me via email in response to our discussion, <laughs> that this $99 Xbox 360 deal is apparently coming to Best Buy soon. Ah, okay, so I was wrong. It is not a promotion for the Microsoft Store. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, it is now, but yeah. Well, that, no, but, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, when you, when you do the math, as you have, 40 bucks more over the life uh, is not bad. 40 bucks over two years is not a that's lot. That's not yeah. a lot. I, I thought it was much more, to be honest. Much more expensive. Uh, your tip of the week, Mr. Therat. Uh Yes. So if you use Windows 7 today with a uh, multi-monitor setup, you know that there are some limitations to that. And um, it, actually, it, these limitations are part of the reason I actually have not done that because I just don't... I just don't like how Multimon works in Windows for whatever reason. It's something I just don't feel they've ever gotten right. In, in Windows 8, they're improving it pretty dramatically. And they're also adding, of course, this notion of Metro. So you have to deal with that. And actually, I think it's the Metro approach to multi or to multi monitors that's maybe the most lacking. And I think that's just because, again, it's a 1.0 type of thing. But how, how does it look work? At it, so the Metro interface is on one screen? It's, all, it's only going to be on one screen ever. You can actually switch which screen it is. It's not very obvious in the consumer preview, but they're going to make that a lot easier in the uh, release preview. Okay. 
So you can move that thing around. Um, if you could, if you had four monitors, the other three would have to have the desktop on them at all time. Um, oh, you can that, you can't have Metro on more than one. You cannot have it on more than one. So you can have you could have multiple desktops and or multiple desktops plus one Metro. That's up to you. There's some nice so, features in here though. I like different desktop, different backgrounds for each. Yeah. Other. So I think they've addressed I th the key issues with Multimon in Windows today. And I'm told that there's actually going to be some further changes now coming in the release uh, candidate or the release preview that will maybe silence some of the critics of how it works in the consumer preview. So people were complaining about how, you know, it's hard to use those edge UIs or the hot corner UIs uh, because, you you know, instead of stopping up at the corner, the mouse keeps going into the next screen. Right, right. I guess there's some work done there. That, yeah, you'd uh, have to do something, right? Because they use those edge and your edge yeah, is no I haven't longer seen the edge. I haven't personally seen that, but I've been told that that's going to be fixed. Um, so people that were complaining about that will be happy. But I think more important, though, is just looking at some of the stuff that, you know, they fixed from Windows 7. So you can choose uh, whether your uh, taskbar is replicated on the multiple screens or if oh. the taskbar is specific to the multiple screens, which is how I prefer to use it. Um, so that the apps running on that display are showing up in that taskbar? Just on that taskbar, oh, yeah. That's neat. Yeah. That's nice. You can have them all on the main screen and then also on the sub-screens just for those screens or just have the buttons be for whatever screen you know they're attached to. Right? It's, it's pretty amazing how many options there are. It's also pretty amazing how many different screens you have to go through to find all these options <laughs> yeah, because of course. there's like they're literally yeah no it's amazing how many interfaces there are but and some of them are metro interfaces and some of them are classic desktop interfaces but you can do it all and you can you know there's settings for rotating the monitors and physically aligning them you know or, or virtually aligning them so that they uh, match how they are physically aligned you know uh, next to each other on the desk and so forth so um I'm, the multi-monitor support is not the reason to upgrade to windows 8 of course but this has always been a sore spot, and I have to say, uh, you know, I, I got a new PC today, so I have my uh, new PC hooked up to the second monitor, and I already miss having Multimon, and Multimon is something I never used before because I just couldn't stand the way it worked in Windows 7, and it is, it is in fact, much better. That's uh, awesome. Windows 8. Yeah, so that's good stuff. Paul documents it all on his uh, site, the super site for Windows, in his Windows 8 feature focus. Yes. So you can read, it, read all about it. Yep, and more system. to come to it. So, you know, release preview will have even more improvements. Cool. And your software pick of the week? Yeah, I was kind of scrambling to, uh, to find something, and Raphael recommended this. Uh, it's a tool called Everything, and it literally searches for everything in, in Windows. So if it's on your hard drive, it will search for it. And it's, it's amazingly fast. Wait a minute, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't Windows do this? It does, but Windows relies on indexing, and it doesn't always search very well across different uh, sources and so forth, and this thing is actually much faster. Huh. And so what's interesting about it is you install it and you run it and you type in a search term and then the results come back immediately. Oh, that's cool. And it's, there's no indexing. There's no anything. It's very lightweight. It works, it works great in Windows 8, by the way. And um, I, it's kind of, it, I wish there was – the only thing that's missing is – and it, yeah, I'm sure there are ways to add this, obviously. But I would like there to be some, some form of keyboard control where I could just uh. you know, have the thing pop up. Um, but once you do run it, it's uh, it does sit in the tray. You can just double click it, and I'm just I'm really impressed by, by the by the speed of it. It is literally as you type, it's filling out the entire list. It's amazing. Well, that's kind of like X1 and, used to do that. They're not doing yeah. any indexing. There's no indexing. It's it's literally understand. just using wow. anti-fuzz metadata. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Wow. It is really really good. Wow, that's cool. So free. It's excellent. It's called everything. Everything, and, everything it, and it comes. Everything comes to you from VoidTools.com. Yes, it requires an NTFS, by the way, so you can't run this on FAT32 or whatever. Oh, but. okay. So it's using an NTFS. That you're right. Mm -hmm. It's using their metadata, obviously. Yeah. yeah, really nice. Cool. Thank you. Now it's time for Mary Jo Foley and a somewhat surprising enterprise <laughs> pick of the week. <laughs> I know. Just when you thought Silverlight was dead, <laughs> it's not really dead. You can't pick it. It's dead. Yeah. Believe it or not, Microsoft updated Silverlight this week. <laughs> they didn't tell anybody they did, um, but that's they did. Funny. It was part of the Patch Tuesday set of updates. And what was really kind of entertaining was on the Microsoft page, it said Silverlight 5.2 is out. Go get it. And when you went to get it, it actually wasn't Silverlight 5.2. It was 5.1. So it's Silverlight 5.1 that's the Enterprise Pick of the Week. The zombie and edition. So, yes, the zombie <laughs> edition. Now, it, 
you know, it, it's funny because when, when we started hearing five was the last version of Silver Lake that they were going to do, I, I had a couple tips saying, you know what? No, there actually is going to be a 5.1. Right. And so this this may actually be the last version. Wow. Um, and what's new in this one, there's some security fixes. There's some DRM fixes, out of browser fixes. So a lot of little nice to have things um, that are out there. And Microsoft still, as far as I have heard, is done doing any more versions of Silverlight, at least any more major versions. And the but they are going to support Silverlight through 2012. Uh, sorry, not 2012. Now. No, 2021. <laughs> the end of the month, it's over, kids. No. Through the 2021. <laughs> wow, that's a long time. So, wow. Right. So, you know, even if, even if you still are someone working on a Silverlight project or have Silverlight in your or, IT shop, or if which you're Netflix, do, which runs on yes. Silverlight, Right. You, you do not need to panic immediately. You have till 2021 to panic. So there you go. <laughs> I doubt very much by then we'll be worried about Netflix, but who knows? You never know. You never know. And uh, finally, we wrap things up with uh, Mary Jo's code name pick of the week. Yes. So this is not a brand new code name. It's VS11, which is Visual Studio 11, which confusingly actually is a product that's probably going to be called Visual, Visual Studio 12. 2012 when it's out. <sighs> the code, yeah, the code name is VS11. The product name likely to be Visual Studio 2012. Just okay. to keep things fun and interesting. Uh, but the reason I made it my code name pick of the week this week was Microsoft announced that they're making some changes to the interface on this, and these are going to sound really minor to people who aren't Visual Studio people. But man, they, they these changes could not have made developers happier. So. When they came out with the last version, the beta version, the background um, of a number of parts of Visual Studio was a very dark gray, and people were so depressed by it. Like, people were like, oh, I don't want to make that my development environment. It's dark gray. Yeah. There's no color. Yeah. It's so horrible. Yeah. So Microsoft's actually adding back in a little bit of color in, in the tabs and a couple other places, and they changed the dark gray to light gray. Hold the presses, people. <laughs> That's so <laughs> much better. It's so much, and people are so happy. I no, mean, I think people, so because you at least you yeah. give people the choice. I mean, God, to make have to look at dark gray all the time. Eesh. Yep. And so what's what's interesting here is so this is they're telling us about this because the release candidate of Visual Studio 11 is going to happen probably the exact same day as Windows 8 release preview comes out because Ooh, they've been in lockstep the whole way. So, yeah, so th they're getting close. They're starting to tell us what it's going to look like. They're showing it to some people inside this this new interface. They're not making this available to the public yet, but they're telling you this is what you're probably going to see when the RC hits, which I guess will be the first week of June since that's when Windows 8 release preview will <laughs> It's come. ironic because I did a search for a VS11 uh, uh, light theme, and all I can find is videos on YouTube for changing the light theme back to the dark theme. <laughs> So obviously, really? some people like the dark theme. I guess. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so I many was so people were posting. Yeah. Right. Well, you that's get you know what it is. People hate change, and uh, they so do. yeah, they do. So uh, I think light is a little easier to use, but uh, maybe maybe you like the dark. It's not so much the light as it is the contrast, right? So right. there are color elements now, right? And uh, darker elements for the toolbar buttons there. That makes a big difference. That's <laughs> so funny. No matter what you do, there's somebody who doesn't like it. That's the fact, Jack. Yep. Especially when you're Microsoft. Yeah. Yes. Paul Therott is at the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. You'll find uh, many of the things we talked about today in articles there. You can mm -hmm. also uh, read his book, Windows Phone Secrets, and his new one, Windows 8 Secrets, is in progress. Soon to be a major motion picture. <laughs> or at least at a bookstore near you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Maybe we'll make some YouTube videos. <laughs> there you go. Mary Jo Foley blogs about Microsoft at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Her most recent book is Microsoft 2.0. Uh, but you can, you can, if you can't get enough Mary Jo, there's that great book. But then there's, of course, blog posts like every five minutes at <laughs> allaboutmicrosoft.com. And it's all there. It's all in here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We do this show uh, every uh, when Leo shows up every uh, Thursday. I got I already got an email from somebody saying <laughs> you should start on time. And I apologize. I, I was at a board meeting and as usual on these uh, Thursdays, it goes a little long. He said you should start on time. I'm going to go watch Revision Three. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which is interesting because uh, they don't do anything live. So, of course, they start on time. They start whenever yeah. you want them to. <laughs> so I sent them a note saying, I don't get your logic. You know, you could just watch our downloads and forget we're even live. But anyway, I apologize. I am sorry. Uh, I will be... Uh, no, I, this, I mean, it, look, this is scheduled as far as I'm concerned. I mean, we know that occasionally you have these board meeting things. These, these, right? these dumb meetings, they always go long. 11 a.m. Pacific, if I'm on time. Usually by eleven thirty, anyway, uh, at twit.tv. That's every uh, Thursday, and like, you know, and then sometimes we have schedule changes for other reasons as well, conferences and so forth. Um, but do join us live if you can. It's always fun to have you. I watch the chat room like a hawk, and um, we also have downloads available at any time, so you can watch at your convenience. Those are all at twit.tv, and of course on the Zoom Marketplace and everywhere. The best podcasts are aggregated. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Joe. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week. Windows Weekly.